Hey guys, I'm back again to finish the end of chapter 22. When we left off, uh, they were running through that tunnel and the ceiling was falling, 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 and it was going to squish them. Um, and the, it was just like 10 inches off the floor and it's keep going down. So I don't know what's going to happen, but on the page of 231, we're going to find out. Molly was slightly shorter and slightly faster. She squeezed through the final stone door just as it slammed shut. Molly, Addison shouted, look for a switch, a lever, something, anything that might trigger the trap to stop. The ceiling was now six inches from the ground. Eddie was trapped, squished flat like a bug. Addison felt his ribs compressing, the air being crushed from his lungs. Molly, he wheezed, stop lollygagging and save us. Molly must have found something because just when Addison was ready to throw in the towel on this whole staying alive business, the ceiling ground to a stop. Addison wanted to cheer, but he could not inhale a breath. Slowly, millimeters at a time, the cave ceiling ground its way upward and the tunnel door lifted open. Thank you, Molly, you wonderful cook. Addison filled his lungs with air and felt oxygen return to his brain. That was absolute torture. You think that was bad, said Molly. The release lever was inside one of those stone ghost skulls. I had to stick my hand in there. Addison made no argument. He, Raj, and Eddie scraped themselves off the floor and crawled into the final chamber. Addison made the steep climb to his feet and teetered there, remembering how to balance. They were in a circular chamber with cliff walls soaring above them on all sides. A bear, said Molly. Addison followed her eye line to a spur of stone that jutted 100 feet directly into the air. He cranked his neck farther and farther back until he could see the top, where a single stone Buddha sat cross-legged, eyes half-closed in meditation. A hole cut in the cliff illuminated the Buddha with a single shaft of light, and there, on the Buddha's lap, a steel object glinted. The helm of Sir Frederick! The team tittered excitedly until Molly lifted a finger for silence. Somewhere far behind them came a sound like shouted Russian. Addison felt his stomach drop. Come on, let's snag this clue and skedaddle. He made it sound easy, but the group stared doubtfully up at the enormous pillar of stone. Do we climb it? asked Raj. I don't have that much rope, said Molly. Addison weighed the problem. Buddha does not go to the mountain. The mountain comes to Buddha. Eddie looked at him quizzically. I'll say what? We don't have to get to the helmet. We make the helmet come to us. How? Telekinesis? The Mongols were excellent bowmen. Maybe the idea is to plunk the helmet with an arrow and knock it all the way down. I thought Sir Frederick had these clues for Christians to find, not Mongols. Maybe, said Addison. But this all seems too elaborate for Sir Frederick to construct while he's fleeing Mongolia for his life. I think there's more to this story. Okay, said Molly, thinking practically. Anybody have a bow, an arrow, and incredible aim? Addison frowned in thoughtful silence. Molly, as was her habit, made a decent point. He thought of the flare gun tucked in his blazer pocket, but didn't think it'd be accurate enough to hit a small target at 100 feet. If only Dax had bought that dynamite I asked for, we could set a charge and knock down this pillar. That might collapse the whole cave and bury us, said Molly. Plus, what kind of archaeologist would we be if we blew up an ancient monastery? Addison did not appreciate Molly being right so often. He heard more shouted Russian from somewhere deep inside the caves. Time was running out. He stared at the rocky pillar and shook his head. Dad could solve this. Addison turned back to Molly. What's in Dad's survival kit? Molly threw open the satchel. She tossed aside a magnifying glass, a water purifier, and a braided hemp rope. She kept searching, half hoping a bow and arrow would magically pop out. Either that or a giant magnet to attract the metal helmet. What Addison discovered was significantly better. Beautiful! Addison picked up the braided hemp rope. He unraveled it and stretched it taut. Addison, that rope's two feet long. I don't think it will reach. This isn't a rope. This is one of the deadliest weapons in history. A leash? asked Raj. A belt? asked Eddie. It's called a sling. This is how David killed Goliath. Addison pointed to the pouch sewn halfway along the rope. You pack a stone in this pocket. 
swing the sling around your head, build up some speed, and whip the rock at your target. Sounds kind of primitive, Molly said doubtfully. It's lethal. A good slinger files a stone 90 miles per hour. This was good enough for Raj. He found a few chunks of stone and selected the most evenly rounded piece. He whirled the sling over his bandanaed head and launched a rock 90 degrees in the wrong direction. Everyone ducked as the stone smashed against the wall by their heads. Addison tried the sling next and managed to wing himself in the head. He sat down, slightly dazed. Everyone agreed that since they valued their lives and still had much to live for, Eddie should not have a turn. Molly tried the sling last. She twirled the sling over her head like a lasso, building up speed, and flung the stone high in the air. It blasted sand from a rock two feet to the left of the Buddha statue. Addison shushed the team before they could cheer too loudly. With Russians searching the caverns, it was best not to reveal their location so easily. Molly tried a few more stones, getting a feel for the ancient weapon. I feel bad launching missiles at the Buddha. He is a symbol of peace. Her next stone clanged loudly off Sir Frederick's helmet, but did not dislodge it. Still, the helmet skittered a few inches across the Buddha's lap, and that was encouraging. Her sixth and seventh stones were also encouraging, but it was her seventeenth stone that sent the helmet clattering off the precipice and clanging to the ground. Molly, you're a natural, Addison proclaimed. Molly held the sling proudly in her hand. She felt she'd made a new best friend. Addison scooped up the helm and brushed it off with the backs of his fingers. 800 years ago, the helm had crowned Sir Frederick. Now it was in Addison's hands. Turning it over, he discovered the next clue scratched on the inside of the helm, just above the visor. Bravo, Molly. It's brava, said Eddie, who understood a little Italian. Molly was not paying attention. She was craning her ears toward the door. A few seconds passed before they heard the sound of crashing rocks and a shouting Russian. Someone's coming through the haunted hallway. Addison started for the exit. Addison, said Molly, we have to copy the clue. We'll copy it on the run. We're trapped here if we don't move quickly. All in favor? Addison's team voted with their feet. They ran. <laughs>